What's up guys, this is Yannis.Y here, and today we are gonna be talking about the Steyr L9A2MF. Before we do that, I wanna thank my Patreon supporters, as always, thank you guys very much. If because of you, I can afford this gun. Purchase this gun with the Patreon dollars. If you want to support the channel, all you gotta do is go down to the link in the description and sign up. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter named Iowa. It's the YSS, it is a youth shelter. Those kids could use your help. Do a good deed, go down, donate a buck to those kids. The link is also in the description. I would really appreciate it. And now, the Steyr L9 A2 MF with a whole bunch of other letters I'm sure they'll think of eventually. Uh, long name, but great pistol, but super weird. And we're gonna get into the quirks and some of the advantages and disadvantages of this particular firearm uh, over this full length review here. Uh, I don't have a lot of, there isn't a lot of videos online of this particular gun. And I think because, uh, particularly because Steyr is not necessarily one of the biggest companies in pistol manufacturing anymore. Uh, they used to do a lot back in the um, 80s, 90s, stuff like that. But lately, at least in the American market, you don't hear about Steyr a whole lot anymore. But I think you should. And I'm gonna try to change that a little bit with this video. Uh, the Steyr is a compact, in size, four inch uh, pistol with a long dust cover and it does uh, have a striker fired uh, trigger system with a polymer frame. So it is 27 ounces with a four inch barrel, uh, very similar in size and specs to a lot of other pistols in the market, including like the PPQ, PDP Compact, VP9, it's almost exactly the same size as the uh, uh, PDP Compact. Uh, also very similar in size to the Glock 19 or the M&P Compact. A great size and weight for an absolute do-it-all pistol. Polymer frame striker fired pistols are reliable, durable, easy to use, and cheap to produce. So it simply makes sense to pick one of these as your do-it-all pistol, but why would you pick the Steyr? The Steyr has quite a few features on the gun that make it a departure from a lot of the guns in its class. First up is absolutely going to be the bore axis and grip. So as you can see there, uh, the bore axis and grip of the Steyr is significantly lower than most pistols. Uh, I would argue that it's in the top of 1% as far as bore axis and felt recoil, but there is some cons to that which we'll get to here in a minute. But we'll start with the front here. This is the uh, four inch barrel and then you will see the uh, super strange Tron-esque sights, uh, which we'll get into a little bit more in accuracy, but standard Ameriglow sights and stuff like that are available now. So if you don't like them, just like Glock sights, you can pop them out and put new ones in for around $60. Uh, we have a full length dust cover here with a big old Picatinny rail looking awful mean, I might add. Adds a lot of weight to the front of the gun, which will help with that recoil control as well. We have front slide serrations up here, which even though the slide is very low profile, are extremely usable. And I think that's partially due to the fat slide. It's short, but it's fat, you know, like a Coke can. <laughs> but, but anyway. Uh, uh, the uh, slide itself is very functional and during recoil, uh, very unnoticeable. It's very low profile, very lightweight, so it gives you very little recoil impulse whatsoever and it allows you to track the sights fast and get back in the gun fast. Uh, the trigger is super strange. As you can see here, it's similar to a Glock trigger if a Glock trigger ate a whole lot, like if, it, <laughs> like if it went to McDonald's for three weeks. As you can see there, it's a little bit wider, a little bit fatter overall profile and way low to the trigger guard as well, which I do like. Uh, trigger guard is a little bit small towards the rear, which is kind of strange, but as you can see here, it wraps out in front here, so it's very usable for glove hands. That was a very smart design. We have some serrations up here if you guys use that. We have a really high trigger undercut and a really, really nicely done magazine release. It's long, it's extended, sort of, but it's very low profile still, so it allows you basically for all thumb lengths to reach this without hitting it by accident. One of the better magazine releases I've seen in a while. Now, one of the improvements from the original to the uh, Generation 2 two here is going to be the texture on the grip. As you can see, the texture on the grip is fantastic. One of the best textures in the polymer frame pistol world. Uh, really, really well done. Uh, a little bit less than the M&P, uh, on par with like the PDP. So pretty aggressive, but not too aggressive where it's gonna hurt your stomach. Perfectly done in my opinion. The grip's kind of strange, but really customizable, which I like. So you can see it's got the side panel
panel similar to the VP9, which is a great addition. They simply just slide in and out, which is pretty cool, uh, along with a backstrap system where it comes with three backstraps. So you can customize this grip to basically whatever size that fits you the best. Downside to that is a lot of European guns like this, you'll be able to cu customize the bottom of the grip a great deal, but you won't be able to customize the trigger length, like on a Glock, for example, where you can put the backstraps on it and you can change uh, where your trigger finger hits the trigger. And in my opinion, that customization is a little more of a necessity to me personally with the big old hands than this is. So although this is cool and innovative, does it affect my shooting as much as a backstrap? I would argue no. But most people don't have that problem because most people aren't like 6'4". The uh, checkering on the front of the grip is not nearly as good. Personally, me, I would stipple that. And on the rear, you do have some pretty good frag pattern checkering, although it does slip around a little bit. And I actually have a tendency to uh, use this uh, a great deal on my gun for recoil control, uh, just the way I grip the gun. So the grip is really well done for most people, but maybe not necessarily my cup of tea. Now getting into that further, because you are getting so low on the gun, uh, it offers up a different grip angle than I've ever felt in my life as well. When I grab the gun, as you can see right here, the, the front of the gun points higher than uh, my wrist will allow here. I don't know if you see that. So every time I go in and try to engage a target, I end up engaging the target high. And a lot of people are like, well, just get used to it, break your grip over more, uh, just like a Glock. But you do do that with a Glock, yes, but this is even more extreme than a Glock to the point where I feel like it gets a little uncomfortable for me. And now that could be just because I'm so used to shooting what they would call an American grip angle or a 1911 grip angle. But I heard that so much in the comments, I wanted to show the grip angle difference between this and maybe some European guns that obviously don't have a 1911 or American style grip angle. I'll give you an example, the VP9 here, uh, this grip looks nothing like the 1911 grip angle, but still uh, points very intuitively in my hand, as you can see there. The tan folio, very old design, as you can see here, not exactly a 1911 style grip angle, but certainly more straight and vertical, and in my opinion, a much more comfortable and pointable grip angle. And then finally, we have the uh, uh, Beretta M9A4 here, which again, uh, more vertical and squared off grip angle, allowing me to engage targets just that much quicker, and it doesn't take any more uh, specialized training to get good with those three guns as it does with this gun. And uh, that's gonna be a theme of this review which we are gonna talk about. So the grip angle is extremely strange. Can you train through it? Absolutely you can. But if you have a lot of experience on a Beretta M9 or a 1911 or an M&P or something with that style grip angle, this is gonna be widely the exact opposite of that. That's my dog barking, it's gotta be like the UPS guy. All right, so now that we're dealing with the UPS guy and I, I ate some of my wife's food, we are back in action here. So I want to continue with the grip angle portion. So I just wanted to reaffirm how big of a deal that is because I've never had a gun point more further north than this one does uh, right when I try to get a, a good grip on it. Uh, even more so than the Arsenal and uh, some of the other more low profile guns like the Lago Arms Alien, which has a much lower bore axis than this, but still has a very pointable angle. Uh, not that it's a bad gun. You're just going to have to train through it and you're going to have to get used to it. And if you have some wrist issues like I do, maybe it's something that's not worth training through. So uh, before you decide to buy one of these, I would pick one of these up at a gun store and get a good feeling of what it actually feels like to get a sight picture. Because not just the grip angle takes some getting used to, but obviously the sighting setup as well. So the grip angle uh, has some pros and cons which we'll get into and so does the sighting setup. So the sighting setup here looks super strange and I always talk about how it looks very Tronish or how it looks like very 1980s video gamey. Like somebody, somebody made this up with like an LSD fever dream. I've never seen any sighting setup like this. However, it is extremely effective. Uh, I was easily able to get hits at 80 plus yards with this once I got used to it. A lot of times I find myself shooting high because of the grip angle, and then a lot of times I find myself shooting high because I want to make that thing a pyramid. Like, look at it. It just wants to be a pyramid, but you're going to shoot high that way. What you actually have to shoot is a sight picture like this. And to me, that's so not intuitive. The sights are, like I said, very effective. And if you shot one gun all the time, if this was your only gun, it would not be an issue. But imagine going from a sight picture like this to a sight picture like this. To me personally, this is a significantly superior uh, sighting setup to me. A very simple, very easy, uh, and these are just the stock sights that come on the H&K. Now we'll get into a 
maybe a more traditional sighting setup if I can fit it in here with the with the suppressor. But uh, you can see there that three dot uh, sighting setup is just so much different overall than something like the Steyr. So it's gonna take some getting used to to get used to the sights, but I'm telling you that chevron at the front, that tipped front is so much more precise than I originally gave it credit for. And I can't say enough how much I like that for actual distance shooting because it gives you a fine point to put on the target as opposed to a thick post. And the further and further you get back with a thick front sight, the more and more you cover up the target and the more and more difficult it ends up being. And then if you are f far enough back to where you have to elevate Elevate your sights. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that technique, it, but, but if you do have to do that with the Steyr, it gets even more effective because then you actually get into that triangle, which your eyes want to do anyway. So uh, very cool sighting setup, kind of a niche sighting setup, but certainly worth taking a look at. Even if you're not interested in the Steyr, maybe check out a uh, sight picture similar to this. If you get used to it, it could make you a very, very proficient long range shooter. That being said, up close speed, I had a hard time with it. It's fast. I just end up always shooting high with it because of the because uh, of the uh, angle of the grip. Aside from intuitively shooting, uh, imagine s having a snap sight picture like coming into target and you come up to it like this. There's a lot that can go wrong with this and your eyes don't want to like easily center it, I guess, or at least mine don't. Maybe my, my old Iowa hillbilly eyes don't want to do it. But that being said, it's just a weird thing to get used to and you can train through it, but I just wanted to mention it. So the grip's a little weird, the sighting setup's a little weird, and then we oh, why not have a weird trigger, right? <laughs> so along with all those weird features, let's have a weird trigger too. Uh, the, the trigger feels really good, the uh, trigger pull is absolutely excellent as you can see here boom perfect pull uh, breaks like glass uh, a little bit heavier than a pdp or vp9 but certainly a lot better than your average glock trigger and then the reset is going to be well you tell me where it was because that's the thing with the styre right the 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 reset once you got used to it would be easy to find but while i play around with it here still kind of difficult because there is no audible or tactile reset and a lot of people that are familiar with the Steyr say that th this is better than the Gen 2 but it's still worse than every other gun so you heard and saw that reset I'll give you a uh, reset on another gun that I have here this is the Zev OZ9 so obvious break obvious reset and the reset on this is obviously much shorter as well although that's a custom johnny glock trigger so it's a little unfair but that being said the audible and tactile reset on the vp9 clearly and easily uh defined and easy to uh train and get used to whereas the styre again a little quirky the actual review process though, we shot a thousand rounds for this gun. A lot of it wasn't filmed, some of it was POV, but we tried to get as many rounds on video as possible. We had no reliability issues whatsoever. And that is really saying something considering we were shooting some uh, cheap remanufactured ammunition that we did have failures on other guns that we were testing alongside it, like the Tanfolio, for example. So this would run ammunition, the Tanfolio would not, and the Tanfolio is known for being a reliable gun, so uh, the Steyr has some serious reliability in my opinion. It ran anything from hot 124 grain all the way to super weak 115 grain with no issues whatsoever. Very nice, very reliable. As I mentioned before, the sights allow you some uh, superior accuracy that you don't expect, and uh, the con of the trigger having a shitty reset has nothing to do with accuracy. So as far as accuracy goes, like pure accuracy on this pistol, it's absolutely fantastic. I would bet you that I could shoot this better than a Glock 19 as far as pure accuracy, but I could shoot a Glock 19 faster. So it just depends on what you're interested in, what you're looking for as far as a pistol goes. If you're looking for pure accuracy with iron sights, it's pretty awesome. That being said, you can get superior accuracy to these iron sights with a red dot, and this does not come red dot capable out of the factory. Maybe some do, 
but I've never seen them. That's certainly possible that they're out there. However, you can probably get this milled, but out of the factory, uh, it's gonna be better than standard sights, but not as good as a red dot, and it does not have the ability to mount a red dot. So again, kind of a niche pistol. So accuracy is good, reliability is good. Recoil and pulse is great. I mean, it's, it's really great. Recoil and pulse and speed are different, which we'll get into. Uh, the recoil and pulse of the gun is absolutely fantastic. Very little uh, recoil and pulse by comparison to anything else on its class, and one of the best and softest shooting pistols in its class by a wide margin. Uh, I would put this up there with like the Storm, the Beretta Storm, the Arsenal, the Archon Type B. Those guns have really low recoil. If you ever shot any any of those three guns versus like your standard Glock or PPQ or something, they have like half the recoil. And you can put this in that category as well. A big part of that is a little bit heavier weight with the 27 ounces, a super uh, low bore axis, super low slide, and just generally great ergonomics. Like one of the reason why this thing points up like this is because they're trying to get you in the most aggressive stance possible with the lowest bore axis possible. So when you do shoot the gun, it feels like you're shooting a 380. So very cool design if that's what you're into. Uh, downside to that for me personally is I'm into mechanical speed, not necessarily recoil and pulse. And what I mean by that is I have pretty good recoil control compared to the average person. So recoil and pulse is a lot lower down on the list for me as far as purchasing a firearm than maybe other people. So what I'm looking for is trigger reset. That to me defines the speed of a gun. And the trigger reset on this Tanfolio is faster than on this Steyr, right? Uh, the trigger reset on this Zev OZ9 is faster than this Steyr. So even if this were to have less recoil, I'd still be faster than the other two because the sh uh, shorter distance between two points is always gonna be faster. Uh, I can hold the recoil under control with technique, I can't overcome the distance of the trigger or the funkiness of the trigger. So it does have very low recoil, but it's not gonna be as fast as something like a Walter PDP, which has more recoil, but a much better trigger. The grip panels are nice. The texture is great. The ergonomics on the gun is great. The gun looks really cool as well. And I do believe it is not only functional, but it is a nice quirky little addition to your gun collection that most people have never even seen. Uh, when I bring this out to the range, people aren't interested because it's a styre, like it's like the AUG or something something like that. People are interested in it because they've just never seen or heard of anything like this before. And that's got a cool factor in itself. Uh, quality gun for a low price. I mean, you're talking uh, same similar price as all the other comparable guns in its class, somewhere between five and $700, depending on where you find the damn thing. Maybe even a little bit lower than that on occasion. So for that price, uh, for these features, this gun has a lot of features that you can't get in any other gun, but it does also have some shortcomings and some stuff you have to overcome. But if you're into that, it's an absolutely fantastic fantastic gun. Odd, but excellent. I gotta say that's probably gonna be like the title of the video now. But overall, I love this tire. I have to admit. It's weird, but I like it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please about your local homeless shelters. Remember to recycle. I'll check you later. What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're going to be listening to my wife make a bunch of noise. I'm just messing. shut the door.